Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, so I'm Saurabh, and uh, I have the privilege of taking the first talk of the lunch. So uh, please bear with me. I'll be talking about Cylon.js uh, and how you can integrate JavaScript with IoT. How many of you are working on IoT solutions? Uh, all right, not much. Any of you have worked with an Arduino here? Okay, cool. So before I start talking about Cylon, uh, we've all seen what JavaScript can do, right? So it's almost everywhere. It's dominating the entire landscape of software development. You can run JavaScript everywhere. We have had great talks for the past two days telling us how to handle speed for performance for JavaScript. It's almost like you know the Australian teams of the early 2000s, where they were almost dominating all the matches and uh, JavaScript is almost something like that, where you could run it almost everywhere now. Uh, we will be talking about IoT and how you can run your IoT solutions, control devices. Uh, I have a Pi, an Arduino, and some more sensors connected, and we'll see how I can control them remotely as well as locally. Cylon.js is a JavaScript framework for robotics and physical computing using Node.js. At its core, uh, it is using Node, and I'll show you how you can get started with it, how you can install Cylon and uh, build simple solutions. Uh, but the cool part about it is that it supports multiple and different hardware devices. So if you're looking to, say, build for multiple devices at once, if you are planning to get into robotics uh, or uh, looking to uh, integrate JavaScript and handle all these devices together, Cylon.js may be a good framework for you. And it's almost the programming that takes place with Cylon is almost as easy as web development now. Uh, I'll show how this code actually runs, but in fact, if you have to run one code across multiple platforms, there's just a minimal changes in the code that you need to do in your programs to make it run across, say, an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Of course, the setup initially will be there, where you'll have to set the environment so that Cylon can run. Uh, because it's using uh, its own protocol. So for example, if there's an Arduino, it will use uh, a Formata protocol so that JavaScript can actually interact with the microcontroller. And we, I'll delve deeper into what are the architecture, what is the architecture of Cylon.js. I'll try to wrap this up quickly because I want to focus more on the demos. Uh, but I'll just go through this very fast. The first one is MCP. So anything in a Cylon.js program is handled by something called a master control program, which is responsible for coordinating everything inside Cylon, and including starting, stopping both robots and, and the API. I'll go, th go through this quickly because this will make more sense when we see the actual code, but at least you'll get a background of where, where we are heading. Uh, anything in a Cylon program is written in a robo. So uh, a robo is a collection of say an entire uh, set of hardware devices, and you want to control these devices uh, through JavaScript, you can have multiple robots connected, and you can control all these robots uh, within Cylon.js. Each robo may be a collection of devices and connections. And what are devices and connections? Basically, they are an abstraction layer, say, uh, over drivers and adapters. Now, again, th there are new terms coming here. Uh, what are drivers and adapters? Uh, I'll, to explain it very in very simple terms, think of it like this. If you have a Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pi is a board which can run a, lo a lot of stuff, right? Uh, it can run Debian, it can run Raspbian, it's a custom flavor of Debian, and you can run Node.js on top of it, and you obviously you can run Cylon on top of it. So if you have to connect uh, to a Raspberry Pi, you'll be defining the adapter for connecting to the Raspberry Pi in your Cylon program. Uh, again, uh, once you declare that adapter, after that, if you want to change the code uh, and put it somewhere in, say, an Arduino, the only changes that you need to probably do there is uh, change the adapter pattern that is following. Instead of the adapter for a Raspberry Pi, you will say, okay, adapter for, a, for an Arduino, and it should start working. 
So before I go further, I'll start with this code. Is it visible at the back? All right, cool. So uh, the first thing which you obviously need while running a Cylon program is the Cylon module. And for that, you just write var Cylon, require Cylon, you will npm install it. And I was talking about the robo. So this is where your entire connection starts. If you uh, declare this robo and start writing the connection and the devices that it will support, uh, you can clearly see that in, if, you, if you're writing for an Arduino, uh, Cylon will use a protocol called a Formata protocol, and the port, which is it is connected to my laptop right now, so COM3. Uh, in case of Linux, it would be dev, TTY, uh, zero, and you could specify that within the Cylon program itself, and the devices right now I'm using the driver for LED. Now, that's what I was talking about in the slides as well. These are the two main parameters which you need to write in your Cylon program. So in the devices part, you will write uh, LED, or if you have, say, a micro servo, you will write that I want to rotate a servo uh, using this, dr this driver. Uh, all these drivers and adapters, if they are supported by Cylon, they will start working. So that's also an important part. When you're building your robotic solution, uh, you need to take, take care. If, if that platform is supported by Cylon good enough, uh, because then it makes uh, it very easy so for you to write code. And you can directly write the drivers, write the adapters, and start working with it through the methods that it gives you. The main method, uh, think of it like a main function we all have in our uh, programming languages, right? Here it will be the work function, where it's giving you some utilities as well. Uh, where every one second, what I want to do is I want to toggle this LED. And as soon as I define my robo, uh, I'm starting it right here. So you can see it's getting started. And instead of an Arduino, if I'm planning to work with a Raspberry Pi, here's the code for, the, for that. If you notice it carefully, everything remains the same except the uh, connections that I have, where I'm defining a connection for the Raspberry Pi, giving it a name Raspberry Pi, and the adapter for that is defined as a Raspi. And there's one thing which you need to note. When you're working with Cylon, you have support for all these adapters uh, in separate node modules. So if you're looking to work with a Raspberry Pi, for example, you will install a separate mode, node module for that. Or if you're looking to uh, interact with, say, a GPIO pins of a Raspberry Pi, uh, GPIO general purpose input output to interact with the input and output pins of a Raspberry Pi to, say, for example, light up an LED, uh, you will start installing that module. So everything in Cylon is broken up. Whatever you need, you start installing that module and start using it. In devices, I've written the same thing, uh, but the pin here is, has changed because I'm using a GPIO pin. And the pin number here refers to the physical pin number on a Raspberry Pi. So uh, a Raspberry Pi has a lot of lots of pins. And there are some pins marked for GPIO, some VCC, ground. I'm using the pin 11, uh, which is a GPIO pin. and I'm in my work function, I'm telling every second, toggle this LED. And the same thing will happen in an Arduino and a, a Raspberry Pi. Just to get this started, I will run this. And if you see uh, at the screen now, this starts getting, uh, this starts blinking LED. A simple code just to get you started of how you write function, how, how you write programs in Cylon, but we'll delve deeper uh, now. And I'll just stop this. So what I'm doing is I'm just running Node on my computer. Arduino is connected to this computer through my through a wire. Uh, and since it's, it is defined on COM3, uh, I've defined that this is the port that I want to listen on. And this is running perfectly uh, using Cylon. I'll just stop this. I'll just go back. Now, uh, if you may ask, if you want to connect, say, multiple devices, if you want to add an LED plus a button, how do you do that? Again, very simple. If you just uh, want to add the list of devices, you will add it in the devices part, LED button. And the driver for a button will be separate. Again, uh, it will be the button driver. And I've connected to a separate pin. And uh, if you look at the functions, it's very simple to see. Uh, 
uh, if, as soon as you push a button, the LED starts toggling. And this is possible not only with devices, so if you're building a connection with, say, a leap motion as well as an Arduino, you can directly define that in the connections parameter at the top. And uh, in the work function, again, you will just tell the Cylon Robo that this is what I want to do. I want to turn on or turn off my LED if the length is greater than zero, I want to turn it on. And if I want to turn it off, uh, if the length is not greater than zero. So pretty easy. Uh, I'll just show a few quick demos. But before that, this is what we had. What are drivers and adapters? Uh, adapters are in charge of connecting to platforms, uh, again. And adapter classes ensure that the drivers are able to directly communicate with the platform. And the drivers, meanwhile, the drivers which you saw for, say, a servo or an LED, they are used to issue commands, but uh, they are not concerned of how those things are connected. That, that is the part of, of an adapter. And uh, this is an example. So say, for example, a servo driver, it will know all the commands to tell a servo to turn to a certain angle, but it has no idea of how uh, to connect to the servo, because the adapter will take care of that part. The adapter means the Raspberry Pi adapter, the Raspberry Pi adapter will take care of how to connect to a servo and start rotating it. Uh, in the architecture diagram, again, it's, it's very simple. Uh, you have a robo, you have connections and devices. Now, a lot of things are abstracted. So connections are an abstraction over adapters and devices are abstraction over drivers. And there are events which are being handled by the robo as well. And we talked about uh, the MCP at the beginning. And the MCP is the overall program which handles all of these things. But how the interaction with the robo takes place is right here, which, where it takes place with a connection and an, ad and an adapter. So, uh, in fact, if you want to run the same code on, on, to turn on an LED, we just saw that. You just need to write whatever the driver and adap adapter is there for that specific platform. You only change the adapter and it should start working fine. Now, I'll delve deeper into uh, how you can take, take care of this remotely. Remotely, code samples, interacting remotely, right here. So, uh, I have another program here in which I want to, say, run a servo remotely. I want to, I, the servo, if I just show you this screen share, the servo is this blue part, which you see. This has a fan at the top, you could say that a very small fan, it should start rotating, but I want to do this remotely. Now, what I'm doing is, uh, Cylon is, is a framework which can help me do that, but to interact with it remotely, I can use cloud as well. So I'm using another, uh, I'm using the SDK for Node.js uh, for Azure, and I'll just directly go to my commands, and start running this program. I think, is internet down? All right, uh, I guess it is. All right, not a problem. Uh, anyways, I wanted to connect to this Raspberry Pi uh, through, my, through my laptop because I already SS, SS, SS etched into it. But thankfully, I have the demo video available with me, so I will go to my backup, and I will start showing you that. If the internet is back within the next two minutes, I, I can show you the live demos, but this is how it wor it's working right now. This is the Raspberry Pi where I'm running this program uh, for remote servo. This is the servo uh, which you're just seeing, connected to the Raspberry Pi, and uh, this is my utility for interacting with cloud. So if you look at, look at this carefully, uh, this says that this is the device ID, the servo 4, and I want to start the servo. As soon as I do that, uh, I click on send. You notice I just clicked on send, and this thing should start auditing. All right, so uh, where is this other video? How am I doing on time? Five minutes, all right, cool. Internet is up? Perfect. Just give me a couple of minutes. I'm just uh, SSHing into this again. 172.16, so I'm just noting down the IP of the Raspberry Pi. And if everything goes well, I should be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi. All 
Okay, perfect. And now if I have to say run this program, I will do this. It starts saying working. Current angle is 20. I'm just logging the current angle. But if I want to do this over remotely, say for example, if you guys want to do this, I can give you a utility which can control this server from a separate location. And I will just come here. All right. Close window. Okay. Messages to device. My device is called servo. And this is the message that I want to pass to it. Now, as soon as I do that, my server should start rotating. And if you look at this carefully, uh, this part, it starts rotating at a, at 10 degrees per second. And this is all getting logged on my screen as well. So uh, if I just come back to my screen, you see the current angle that it is running on, 70, 90, it's reducing, then coming back again. So this is how you can do it. I'm using the uh, Cloud SDKs and Cylon.js Cylon to do it. Uh, before I run out of time, I'll just show you a quick demo again. And that will be how you can do it the, the other way, where you can send data from these devices uh, using JavaScript and uh, monitor, monitor it real time on a website. Uh, for that example, I have this thing set up. All right, I just need to see this node by button.js. All right, so this is a button which I've connected to uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and if I just come back here, this should load if it, if it hasn't signed me out. Okay, and I'll start monitoring this device. So this is the number of clicks, the total number of clicks that I've done on a button. And this is a website running somewhere. So I'm using Power BI, uh, for example, but I can use any other thing to just mo start monitoring, on, monitoring it on a website. I'll just go to this, select this button and start monitoring it. And I will, so uh, look carefully what happens here. I will, as soon as I click a, click a button, this thing, this cloud utility should tell me that I have received a command. And it's working there. The, clou the cloud utility tells me that I have received the uh, button one click. And the data at the back, the website which is running remotely, this number should start updating again. So it was 39 before. And it should start showing 40. And within a couple of seconds, uh, it should start, so start showing 41 as well. So yeah, pretty much it, that's it. Running everything on JavaScript, uh, nothing else. and. With that, I think I'm running short on time. I will just close the session. Interacting remotely. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Questions? Questions? Cool, no questions? Hello, one second. Yeah. Um, I know there's a new thing. Um, what is a good device to start with? What is a good device to start with? Oh. So most of the folks, when you're starting, oh, hello world kind of application. starting venturing into IoT, they use a Raspberry Pi. Okay. The latest one is the Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, you could order it on Amazon. Uh, I think it'll cost you 3,000 rupees. And get started with it, buy a few sensors. The hello world for any IoT device is a blinky application where you're blinking a device uh, and use JavaScript, let's say. Okay, is there any way to you know, connect using Bluetooth devices? Or Absolutely, there's a way to connect to Bluetooth. Raspberry Pi 3 itself has built-in support for Bluetooth, and you could interact with various devices over Bluetooth as well. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, does it have any performance hit or anything uh, because we are using JavaScript for interacting with the hardware? Sorry? Or does it have any performance hit or because we are using, um, generally I see people use low-level languages for interacting with the hardware, but we are using JavaScript here. Absolutely. So, how is it? So, uh, for devices which are very low cost, say about three, four years back, we were still using C uh, because it's a low-level language and you can interact directly with the hardware. But with devices, the power of devices coming up, we have a Raspberry Pi. They're able to sub give support for JavaScript very well. The performance is also good. So now, even the high-level languages are good to work with, even Python and JavaScript. Yeah. No. 
Does the framework in itself give you anything to uh, optimize? Like if you're running out of memory on the device or uh, let's say you're creating too many stacks in your uh, application. The framework uh, by itself uh, doesn't give Does the you. Asylum give you anything to like detect uh, early on to see like. Can you hold the mic please? Sir. So uh, since the uh, application is going to run on low memory devices, like maybe you'll have a limited amount of memory. So is it, uh, is the, does the framework give you any way of identifying potential uh, um, out of memory kind of scenarios? Uh, does it have Yes, any yes, you can do that. So at the end, it's running only JavaScript. You could write your own uh, functions there which are interacting with the system properties of a Raspberry Pi or. So how do, how do you debug on the device? I mean, how do you debug on the device? Yeah. Uh, there are, there are uh, two ways. One is when you're doing it locally, when uh, you have the device to yourself. You, in that way, you can di just directly plug the device and start seeing what's happening and you can directly SSH into it. The other way is when you're trying to do it remotely. Say, for example, if you have a solution, IoT solution, and you're deploying it at a place far away from you. In that case, again, uh, what we guys usually do is we utilize cloud because it's giving me device to cloud as well as cloud to device communication. So I send the command to, to my Raspberry Pi, for example, and based on the commands that I've generated, uh, it will give me a reply that this is the status of the memory, this is the status of my hard disk, or stuff like that. But that is the part which uh, you have to go ahead and develop yourself. Uh, I've built a similar solution, so if you go to my GitHub, uh, GitHub slash Saurabh Kirtani, I've built a similar solution where could, you could handle it remotely and start seeing uh, the various parameters. Hi, Saurabh. Who is this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is Abhijit. Hmm. Uh, I have been using uh, Windows uh, as your IoT, uh, IoT hubs. Windows as your? I mean, Windows as your IoT hub. Okay, it's not Windows, it's Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Silent.js I'm hearing for the first time. Okay. I mean, uh, in which scenario would you recom be recommending this uh, Silent.js? Because uh, most of the cases, if you are on um, Windows IoT, right, so you have mostly everything is accessible to you via native c -Sharp language. Okay, you're talking about Windows IoT core, is it? Yes. All right. So, uh, Silent.js is mostly used where you have uh, multiple devices and you want to get started with them and interact between those devices. But you can run Silent.js on a Windows IoT core machine as well because uh, Chakra and JavaScript engine can run on a Windows IoT core machine and that's what Silent needs. It just needs a JavaScript environment to run. That's it. So, but it the, can. Uh, at the end of the day, the success of this uh, Silent.js will depend upon how many adapters are. Uh, Absolutely. So right now, uh, it has a great support. It has about, I think it's 41. Uh, and they're not only low level hardware devices, uh, say for example, a Pi or anything, it, it has support for a drone as well. So if you're using an AR drone for that matter, or any other device, it has support for that as well. So uh, it's mostly used where you're trying to build multiple devices, build, build robots and make them connect to each other. Uh, that's where so what we generally see is whatever comes from Microsoft that is well known for uh, being integrated with end-to-end -end solution. So uh, Silon.js, does it offer anything good to uh, integrate with IoT Hub? Silon.js uh, will not give you inbuilt support for IoT Hub uh, because the part of interacting with the cloud is dependent on, the, on whichever company's cloud you're using. So in this case, if you're using Azure, it's responsibility of Microsoft to uh, make IoT Hub SDKs in Node.js for the community, and all these SDKs are open source, so you can just check how they work. Uh, you could use the, those SDKs, install them, and that's where you you connect to cloud. Salon wouldn't give you out, out of the box. Azure will give you that. Um, one question there. The others, please meet the speaker outside. We're running short of time. Who's this? Uh, I'm, I'm Karthi okay. Gain. Uh, I just want to on the where? balcony. Uh, is it top? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I can I using this uh, Silent JS? Can I connect to other other cloud platform like AWS? Absolutely, you could you could do it, do it to any cloud platforms. If if you use it, if you have a SDK for IoT uh, for that cloud, uh, that's that's what it needs. The part of interacting with the cloud rests rests with what the SDKs for that cloud supports. Silent will give you uh, op options for building IoT solutions and get interacting with them. But once you're trying to do something remotely. Uh, and interacting with AWS, uh, in that manner itself, you, you use the AWS IoT SDKs, and since it's Node.js running on the platform, you would directly uh, install those SDKs and start pushing it to cloud. So I have one more question: Like, can program Arduino's with this? Sorry? Can you program Arduino's, Arduino devices with this? Can you program Arduino devices with this? Yes. Uh, so the first one which I showed you was an Arduino, uh, which 
the blinky thing which, which was happening here. And once that happens, uh, uh, Salon JS would run. So it has a built-in adapter for, a, for a Arduino. It's using a protocol called a Formata protocol. So uh, it's able to interact with JavaScript uh, to an Arduino. But again, if you want, want to push it to cloud, it depends on the SDKs of, of the cloud provider. So if, if they're giving support for a particular platform, good enough. Thank, thanks, Arav. Cool. Thank you. Thanks.